What's up everybody, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Uh, I've got another Raymond E. Feist Facebook post to dive into. For those of you who have been around for a while, um, I like to pull up his stuff from time to time because it feels relevant every time. Because every time I start to see someone complaining about a television show um, or an adaptation that has been done. In this case, we're looking at The Last of Us, which is getting near universal praise other than a handful of people who are like the adaptation sucks so bad they purposefully set out to ruin the characters and they ruined bill and they ruined this that and the other and ah, rage um every time i start to see that happening <laughs> ray feist puts out a pretty awesome post about the process of taking a book series and turning it into a show and some of the realities along the way including one of which is no one sets out to do something purposely and no one sets out to make a failure everyone has the best of intentions it's great stuff we're going to go through the latest of his facebook posts today um, for those of you who don't know who raymond feist is he is the creator of the rift war saga which was a pretty incredible fantasy series for its time and it has since spawned a ton of books after that uh, it was a best-selling fantasy series for many many years um I loved it. Uh, Jimmy the Hand is one of my favorite characters of all time. Pug's pretty cool, but Jimmy the Hand usually takes the cake for me. And his original series was based on his own world, his D&D campaign that him and his buddies played. Along the way, he went and did something called the Empire uh, Trilogy, or Empire Series, I forget exactly what was the terminology, with Jenny Wirtz. And she's another great uh, science fiction and fantasy author, and together they, they um, built this other world and there were some crossover characters from rift war who showed up in that and when uh six studio optioned um the collective works of raymond feist and jenny um, they have been since both of them working towards sort of in a consulting um manner help make this show get to the light of day maybe we don't know we'll see it's yet to be uh, seen if it's actually ever going to get to series order or not but it's been a very interesting process to see all this unfold um, if you are someone like me who has been involved with some aspects of this but not it's always a very educational and entertaining read um, so in any case we're going to go to his facebook uh, post and we're going to read through this today and have a conversation about whether or not showrunners purposefully set out to ruin the works that they are going uh, into and producing and adapting. Because it's a fascinating thing, because you get people's emotions are way high. Um, anyway, yeah, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all those good things. So Ray, Ray says, enough comments on my repost of the news about Six Studio optioning my and Janny's work. Um, I reflect that a number of you might like a peek into how this sort of things works. If you already know or don't care, feel free to skip over this one. First, it can be a very complex process. I'm way overgeneralizing at times. By the way, this was posted, I'm recording this at 5 p.m. on Saturday, February 4th. This was posted yesterday at 1.30, so it was published on the 3rd of February, um, 1.36 p.m. Yeah, uh, Central Time. Secondly, I have to speak of generalities because the process of acquiring rights to turn a book or books into a film or TV series can be quick, take years, be convivial or resemble urban warfare. There are stories of producers and literary agents screaming at each other over the phone that are not far from the truth. A book is read by someone in a position to want to turn it into a film or TV show, and then that person contacts the author or the author's representative and pretty much says, what's it going to take? The first step is the option. A process, or excuse me, a price is set and how long the option lasts are negotiated. So let's say it's X amount of dollars for two years. The producer now has two years, put it to deal together with other people to get it going. This is the development phase. By the way, for those of you not familiar with this process, if something doesn't happen within those two years, the author gets the rights back. So you get paid, you're selling the rights to your stuff for a window of time, and they have to pay for that window of time. They have to produce something within that window of time, otherwise you get your rights back. If you're not familiar with this, the reason I bring this up is because this is why we continually get new Spider-Man, Batman, you know, Superman, etc., etc., etc. We continually get, especially with the case of Batman, I think it's Spider-Man, we continually get new um, franchise uh, character players in that role evolving over time, and the reason is because the rights holders want to hold the rights so they keep continuing to produce 
content around that character. It's an interesting case study going on right now because apparently Warner Brothers has been politely asked to um, allow their rights to the Lord of the Rings franchise um, uh, lapse so that someone else can come in and create a new adaptation as opposed to them continually trying to lord over Peter Jackson's film trilogy from 25 or so years ago. It's very interesting for those of you who don't pay attention to this kind of stuff um, or don't know about it. All right. So anyway, um, beyond the development phase, uh, that phase itself can range from the producer hiring nobody, but calling everybody they know to try to get people interested or hiring a team of writers and artists to develop all kinds of stuff from an early screenplay pilot script for TV and for TV, often a show Bible, which is a writer's guide and sometimes pitch material all the way up to and including art or even animation. The idea is to spark interest. Once the producer gets that interest from a TV network, and since I'm in a TV deal, we'll leave films aside for the moment, or a streaming service, then all sorts of stuff happens. Mostly research on the author and the book's popularity, the potential audience, the estimated cost of production, best guess how long it might run, and pretty much anything else you could imagine that would be important. That is the development state in a nutshell. A complicated, long tiring process oh, a deal is made and the project goes into pre-production that's when more people are hired casting gets underway and everything is set up to actually start filming scripts are written production diners hire set designers set dressers costume designers etc and once shooting starts that's production post-production the stuff you do with video a few rare films are still shot, but it's 99% digital these days. And editing, video and sound, music is scored, CGI is folded in and all manner of things that will go into putting something on the screen people want to see the above is a glossed over as he says, it's glossed over. It's a very simplified version. He says, a very simple explaining of a very complex collaborative undertaking involving hundreds and even thousands of talented people. If you've sat through the credit crawl of a Marvel film waiting for the bit they drop in at the end of the credits, then you have an idea of how many people can be involved in this process. You could see the XYZ video service somewhere on the other side of the planet from where the show is shot, and that might be another team of computer artists who had the job of making all the water and lakes and oceans look real, and another group hundreds of miles away gets to do the clouds in the sky, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> in short, I cannot stress enough how many people can be involved even in a show you think is so-so. This is the important part for everybody that's listening to my video. No one sets out to screw up the project. Let me highlight that part. Nobody sets out to screw up the project. Sure, sometimes a project is too ambitious for the budget. In the book, they are battling armies, but on the screen, it's a dozen people on each side with low-grade costumes. It happens. Other times, you get, oh my god, that's incredible stuff. We all work for the very best. Now, me and Janny are the authors. What are we doing? We're back home writing books. We'll answer the phone if Six Studio has questions and make suggestions when asked. That happened yesterday. We were on a Zoom conference for about 90 minutes. Will it help? We hope so. One thing has to be stressed, and I got this from a producer friend many years ago. Of every book optioned, only 10% get into serious pre-production. Of every book that gets into serious pre-production, only about 10% get into production. The same small percentage, 10%, do not get finished, do not get out of production, or are shelved and never released. We see so many uh, talk of pilots that aired and then didn't get a pilot order. Many pilots never even got to be seen. They were made and then canceled. In short, it's less than a 1% chance that a book ends up on the screen. It's a miracle that anything gets made, let alone something good. So a brilliant show or movie you love, it's a combination of luck, determination, and mostly talent. So I love that little bit right there because it takes this entire process and whatever show that it is that you're hating on that's adapted from your favorite book series, think about the numbers there in terms of it is like a 1% chance simplified math obviously um that it ever got from book form to the screen that you're watching on whether it's a big screen or your home television or tv or whatever streaming service along the way hundreds if not thousands of people have touched it poked at it prodded at it tried to make it the best they thought it could possibly be ranging from you know a b scale quality thing that's low budget indie film that cost a few million dollars maybe even just a few hundred thousand all the way up to things that are like rings of power ridiculous costing you know a billion dollars to produce over the season you know over the course of like five seasons every show shares that same dna in terms of there's many many people involved there's a lot of money involved and everyone is trying to make something that is as good as possible 
There are a variety of reasons why the good part is subjective, and there's other reasons why the good might be indie versus AAA. It doesn't really matter. No one's out there trying to make something bad on purpose. And if it does make it to the screen, it was, it should be in a way. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably get crucified for saying this, but in a way, everything that ever makes it to the screen should be celebrated even if it's something that we don't personally enjoy. Now, there are those people out there who are going to say, oh, things can be universally bad, and we just have to accept that those are bad, and objectively, that's a bad show, or that's this, that. I don't believe that at all. I think it's all opinion. Because a lot of people hate Waterworld. I love it. You know, it's like, it's one of those things. And, like, Gods of Egypt was not that great of a film, but we've watched it a few times because Chris likes it. And, you know, it's, it's, everybody's got opinions about things. You know, I love Star Wars. Chris is kind of like, eh okay and we accept each other and that's what everybody out there should be doing so anyway i just thought this was a fun read through something um from an established best-selling author who's going through a production right now um of, of his book series one of his book series with his co-author jenny Wirtz. and i thought it was a relevant conversation to the idea that everyone has these days that people are purposefully ruining ruining their book franchises with these adaptations that they just don't like that's not true they might not be very good for varying reasons, um, and good being the subjective thing. Um, and he talks about that here. There could be, you know, overambitious things, and, and so on and so forth. But that's just that's just the nature of it. Anyway, food for thought. Love to hear your thoughts as well. Drop them in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Support with membership, super chat, super stickers, the Patreon page. Join the Discord down there. Links are everywhere. See you next time. Peace.